I mean, even though we say it's only $2,000, if you look at the limit, I mean, it's a fourth of what she can max, what the maximum amount is. So uh, I don't know. It still seems pretty close to me. If you tuned into what's been happening with this case, you know that recently on Monday, our guy, Brian, our guy, Brian Steele, this is Young Thug's lawyer, just filed a supplement to motion to recuse. And not only did he want to recuse Judge Glanville and get him kicked off the case, he wanted to get Judge Rachel Krause kicked off the case. He wants to get Assistant District Attorney Love and Hilton out of there as well. And we went through this entire motion that he sent here and we talked about some of the things he was saying in there some of the reasons he's saying that they should be recused and not involved in the case at all now one of the people that he mentioned in this supplement to motion to recuse was the current judge who's presiding over the several recusals that have been brought up against judge glanville and that's judge rachel kraus all right so she wanted to respond and get this out of the way because she didn't want this hanging over everything she's trying to do with the case. So she went ahead and responded very quickly to what Brian Steele said. And we're going to see her motion here or her denial. She actually is denying Brian Steele's motion to get her off of the case. Now, one of the reasons that Brian Steele was saying that she should be not involved in the case is because not only her connection to Judge Glanville, but she received some contributions to her re-election, uh, her re-election campaign from Judge Glanville. It was two thousand dollars, I believe, that he said uh, that Brian Steele said in his motion to recuse. And we're going to hear and we're going to check out her response and why she says, I get what you're saying, Brian, but it's not enough and I'm not going anywhere. All right. So let's check this out and go through this document. It's only four pages, so it's definitely not as lengthy as <laughs> Brian Steele's. Uh, supplement to motion to recuse, but we've got the state of Georgia versus all of these defendants. Okay. And this is an order denying motion to recuse judge Kraus from hearing recusal motion. All right. So this case was randomly, was randomly assigned to this court to consider certain motions to recuse judge Glanville from further proceedings in the case, which this is still ongoing. And the state is actually required to respond by five o'clock today. So we may have some more news for you coming up soon. Y'all stay soon, tuned for that. On July 8th, 2024, defendant Young Thug filed a supplement to motion to recuse Judge Glanville. All right. Though titled supplement, a portion of the filing seeks to recuse this court from hearing the recusal motions. OK, and then they've got a note here that we'll get to here in a second. It says on July 9th, defendant Young Thug filed an amended supplement to remove an assertion in footnote two of the original of the original supplement. So basically what happened is originally Brian Steele said in his motion that Judge Glanville donated to her campaign and she donated to Judge Glanville's campaign. But he went back and he removed a certain aspect of that, saying that, no, actually, she did not or Glanville did not contribute to her re-election campaign. So he had to go back and fix that. Now that's what they're talking about there. The court therefore must consider the portion of the supplement seeking the court's recusal before proceeding further. When a judge assigned to a case is presented with a recusal motion and an accompanying affidavit, the judge shall temporarily, temporarily cease to act upon the merits of the matter and determine immediately one, whether the motion is timely two, whether the affidavit is legally sufficient and three, whether the affidavit sets forth facts that if proved would warrant the assignment judge judges recusal from the case. If all three criteria are met, another judge shall be assigned to hear the motion to recuse. All right. And then they cite another case here in quotations, uh, assessing whether these three criteria are met does not involve an exercise of discretion by the judge whose recusal is sought, but is a question of law to determine by the assigned judge. All right. And then they cite this case here as well. So defendant Young Thug's motion footnote two later, a lengthy paragraph 52 asserts two bases for recusal of this court. Defendant Young Thug asserts that recusal is merited because of the $2,000 donation made by Judge Glanville to this court's recent re-election campaign. And again, that's talking about Judge Rachel Krause received $2,000 from Judge Glanville. 
All right, Defendant Williams also asserts, our young thug also asserts that recusal is required because it is inappropriate for any judge to preside in any action where one of the parties holds a judicial office in any other court which sits in the same circuit, which is this is what uh, Attorney Weinstein, yet got it, uh, yet Gotti's lawyer was trying to say to the Supreme Court when the Supreme Court said, hey, you have to go through the process. You just can't run straight to us. Young Thug supplement seeking to recuse this court. Speaking of Rachel Krause is supported by an affidavit. And we saw that affidavit in the supplement to motion to recuse. Albeit only footnote one and paragraph 63 as to this court. And it was filed within five days of the court being assigned to handle this case. Therefore, the first two criteria are satisfied. And the only consideration for the court is whether Judge Glanville's campaign donation to this court's re-election campaign warrants recusal. And we had a little bit of speculation about that yesterday. And we're trying to figure out, is this enough to get Judge Krause off the case? Uh, it seems like it's something normal, but we'll see what she says in response here. The judge, the Georgia Supreme Court has held that the mere fact of a campaign contribution to a judge, even from a party to the case, does not warrant recusal where the contribution was not exceptionally large. So basically they're saying that $2,000 donation that Judge Glanville made, it's not a big deal. And it wasn't a big of enough deal for Judge Krause to remove herself from this trial. Okay. So then they state here where there was another case where someone received some contributions and it shows that yes it was okay for her to receive this and it's not enough to kick her off the trial basically all right it says allegations of unexceptional campaign contributions or commonplace support during a judge's election campaign ordinarily are insufficient to require referring a recusal motion for reassignment to another judge all right the code of judicial conduct reiterates that reiterates this point noting that when a campaign contributor is less than the maximum allowable contribution permitted by law an affidavit seeking recusal must must allege additional facts demonstrating the need for recusal All right and then they give another they cite another rule here it says it provides that if if contributions made to a judicial candidate or to that candidate's campaign committee are permitted by law and do not exceed the maximum allowable contribution, then there is no or no mandatory requirement that the judge recuse. Okay, because under Georgia law, the asserted campaign contributions would not warrant recusal and the defendant, yet Gotti, has not alleged any additional facts demonstrating the needs for recusal. He has not met the third criteria for recusal, which I... I kind of agree with. I mean, I don't want to see any Fulton County judge involved in this just because they're all colleagues. But at the same point, if you look at the law, it, it makes a clear pathway for you to get a judge out of there. And besides, you know, Judge Krause receiving two thousand dollars from her colleague, it seems like there really isn't much there for them to get her off of this case. But we do have to keep in mind again. Remember, uh, Mr. Weinstein, Yak Gotti's lawyer is trying to get everybody in Fulton County off of this off of this case. And then Brian in his supplement to motion to recuse said pretty much the same thing that he doesn't want anybody in Fulton County on this case on the recusals uh, touching any of it. Defendant William or uh, Young Thug's addition additional assertion of Judicial Qualification Commission opinion 220 in support of this motion is unveiling for two important reasons is unavailing for two important reasons first judge glanville is neither a party nor counsel in this criminal prosecution nor is this a mandamus action and young thug cannot make it so by filing a recusal motion all right so opinions 220's con conclusion that a judge should not preside in an action where one of the parties holds a judicial office in the same circuit does not apply to this circumstance okay and then going back here let me find where this footnote was mentioned okay they're showing the campaign contrib contribution limits are available here and um i'll actually be interested to see well we'll we won't look at it right now we'll look at it at some point but i'll be interested to see what the maximum 
what the maximum campaign contributions are. Let's see if we can. Let's look at this real quick. So here it's pretty straightforward. So statewide, when it comes to Georgia, limit effective 2021 for a primary and general, it was 7,600. Now the limit is 8,400. And then if there's a runoff, they can contribute more, which is 4,800. All other candidates, okay, so these are candidates that are statewide and local. The new limit is 3,300. And then for if there's a runoff, it's 1,800. So, I mean, even though we say it's only $2,000, if you look at the limit, I mean, it's a fourth of what she can max what the maximum amount is so uh, i don't know it still seems pretty close to me it it still seems it still seems pretty close but i guess we'll just let him have that one all right so we got that one and then it says so opinion 22's conclusion that a judge should not preside in an action where one of the parties holds a judicial office in the same circuit does not apply to this circumstance all right. And then there's they've got a note three here. It says compare uh, Georgia Transmission Court versus Dixon. OK, where judges were either parties or counsels in the underlying case being heard by a judge in the same circuit. OK, so that's where they're saying it's, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Secondly, and perhaps most importantly, Young Thug's motion ignores the clear directive of the Uniform Superior Court Rule 25.4. The rule directs that. In a multi-judge circuit, like the Atlanta Judicial Circuit, a recusal motion shall shall be assigned for hearing to another judge, and the selection shall be ma made by use of the circuit's existing random impartial case assignment method. Okay, and how does that work? Notably, in the two-judge circuit, a recusal motion as to one judge is heard by the other judge. OK, so we can't just keep they're basically saying we can't just keep jumping judges until we've gone through all the judges. It was randomly assigned to one judge. This is the judge that you're going to get. All right. The court does not relish the task to which it has been assigned, but it is as much the duty of a judge not to grant the motion to recuse when the motion is legally sufficient as it is to recuse when the motion is meritorious all right so then they cite this case here it says for the for for the foregoing reasons the portion of young thugs supplement and amendment supplement seeking to recuse this court is hereby denied all right and this was denied yesterday so yesterday it seems like it was at the end of the day yeah at 4 15 we had already been off of the live stream so y'all have to let me know what you think about this one is this another side eye towards the, towards this fulton county legal system in this case specifically i can see where judge rachel krauss is coming from i don't think we should hold all fulton county judges to i guess the uh, the standard that we've seen judge glanville display so she does make some good points in here and she cites several cases to where it seems like it's a little much to say that she can't review this case. But the fact that Judge Glanville donated $2,000 to her, I mean, that's not, it's something. It's not nothing. I mean, everything happens for a reason. So there's something there. And then you add that to the fact that they're colleagues. I don't know. You guys will have to let me know what you think in the comments in the chat about this whole situation with her denying this motion. 